Welcome to Goalie Training Pro TV, episode 46. Today's topic is the RVH and U role in drill. Okay, gang, today we're talking about the RVH and U. And, um, First two things I want you to take away from this is that your ankle doesn't bend like this. So you can't do that. It doesn't like that. Your knee does not bend like this. You're right, you have ligaments in there that are strong connective tissue bands that are meant to keep those joints stable. Those joints really like to move this way, they're like a hinge joint. There's a little bit of movement in there, but they really wanna be hinge joints. So they have very strong ligaments, like you all know the MCL, and there's an LCL, and the ankle has a whole slew of ligaments. When you move those joints beyond their anatomical range, that's when you sprain your ankle or your knee, and that, what that means is you've damaged the ligaments. So, please stop emailing, I mean, you can email me, but please stop asking for stretches for your ligaments of your knee so that you can do this more because that will give you, an, well, number one, you can't really do it other than tearing your ligaments. And then when you tear your ligaments, you can end up with an unstable knee. So take home message, your ankle doesn't bend that way, nor does your knee. So the RVH is a really unnatural position for your ankle and your knee. So how can we make it better? Um, you can recognize, if you're a coach or just a goalie, you can recognize that people have different body proportions. So a goalie with a longer shin or ankle to knee you know, measurement is gonna have more difficulty because if my leg, you know, if my knee is out here, it's a lot harder for me to get, I have a lot more distance to go to seal that post. If say my knee is here, then I'm a little closer to sealing that post. Other than cutting a few inches off your tibia to make you closer to the post, um, you can look at technique, ask your goalie coach about, you know, because a lot of you do skate on posts. Well then again, you know, if my blade is on the post and the post is here, I've got a lot more distance to cover to get into that post position. But if I even go pad on post so that my toe is behind the post, that cuts the distance. Or even if I do skate inside post, it cuts the distance a little bit and it's a lot less torque on the knee. And if you play around with it, you'll sort of feel that difference. Again, that's, you know, I'm not an expert in the on ice stuff, but those are some options. We've talked before about adding a little bit to your knee stack. Not so much that, you know, it, it uh, is cumbersome when you're skating, but if you don't have any kind of a knee stack, you know, you can get little uh, inserts that will give you a little more height on your knee. So then you're not, you know, you're not getting as low. So you can appreciate it if I'm here. Well, if I was up another even half an inch, you know, that's gonna make it a little bit easier. Take some torque off my knee and then my ankle. Um, and then in terms of your off ice training, really the, the reason this torques your ankle and this torques your knee is because you're not getting a lot of hip internal rotation. So the more hip internal rotation you can get, the less torque there's gonna be on the knee. And I mean, not like we're not gonna, there's a law of diminishing returns, but if you can improve your hip internal rotation, you're gonna take some load off your knee and your ankle. So how do we do that? Well, there's a couple of ways that we do that. One is just a prone hip internal rotation. So just keeping my knees together, pulling my feet apart, and I hold for five seconds, come back together, pull apart, I hold for five seconds, I come back together. So, and I might do 10 like that. We can do a supine hip internal rotation. And these are the basics, but they're a great place to start. So we can do a supine hip internal rotation where my feet are just a little wider than hip width. And I'll bring my knees in together and hold for five seconds, then come apart, knees together, 
hold for five seconds. The thing with this one, you have to be a little bit careful because you can use your adductor muscles or your rotating muscles to pull your knees in. I don't want you using your muscles, like, cause some of you, I know you, I know you. <laughs> You're gonna be like, I'm gonna get super wide and then pull my knees together. That's gonna be too much strain on your hips. So it should just feel like a little over pressure, a little bit of a stretch. But again, it's like a five second hold and do 10 repetitions just like that. To get a little bit more hip internal rotation, it's gonna take some of the torque off the system. Um, I think those, those are kind of the two ways I would work to start taking some of the stress off, um, off your knee and ankle when you do the RVH. And then the other thing is realizing, just like a video we shot today with Jason Van Spronson of Future Pro, or we shot it a couple of weeks ago, but I just posted it today. You can find it somewhere here. Um, but you know, it, it's knowing when to use that RVH and, and when not to use it. And I think it's, almost, it's like anything, when it's new, shooters haven't seen it before. So it really stymies them because it's a totally new look. But now it's like, okay, yeah, if I take the puck here, this guy's gonna go in his RVH and then I'm gonna snipe up high, you know, or I'm gonna put it in right there. So shooters are starting to learn where to look. And even goalie coaches are starting to, they're going to the dark side, people. They're starting to work with shooters to be like, okay, the goalies are learning. If it's like this, you know, give them that or do this. And then helping the shooters understand what goalies are doing and what their advantage is so that the shooters can turn the tables. So, you know, you, you gotta have to learn when to use it, how to use it. Uh, selectively you know it's just another tool in your toolbox that is it for goalie training pro tv today short and sweet all about the rvh and you i will catch you next time if you like this video give it a like give it a thumbs up give it a double tap you can ring the bell you can subscribe uh, oh i know what ringing the bell does if you ring the bell it makes sure that YouTube tells you there's a new video because apparently even if you're subscribed, sometimes YouTube is just like, I'll tell them later and then they never do. So if you ring the bell, it's like, it's like, man, they wanna know. So I'll catch you next time. See you.